of you. You can hear me from the last row. Wonderful. Uh, can I ask you to perform a couple of activities? Seated right where you are. You don't have to move around. You, will, you would be ready to do that? All right, wonderful. Now, on a scale of 10, where 1 denotes least happy and 10 denotes most happy, how happy are you at this particular point in time? Can you put that on that piece of paper that you have with you? Done? I'll move on to my activity number two. Uh, can you close your eyes for about 30 seconds? Just close your eyes for about 30 seconds. And in your mind, go through, relive the most happy moment of your life. What must have been the most happy moment of your life? I want you to relive that. Could be passing of the CA exam. Could be when you first got married. Yeah, first got married. That's right. Absolutely. Could be your first job. Could be whatever. You have done that? You can open your eyes now. I think our medium term objective is to move from where you now are to where you once were. That's going to be our medium term objective. And your long term objective would be to move from where you once were the most happy moment of your life. I'm not going to ask you which one was that to something still more happy. That's the broad agenda that we'll try to think, converse across the next 35 odd minutes. And I'll try to lay down with the help of some stories, perhaps three rules that we can follow in order to be very happy. Is that fine? All right. I now want you to take a look at this picture that is coming up on the monitor screen. What do you see there? School days? Anybody saw something else? A ah, beautiful teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Beautiful teacher then. School is not closed. That's the door, I guess. That's the window. Uh, ah, good. Boys at one side, girls at one side, the typical auditor. I also thought you would say that eight boys are there, seven girls are there. Uh, okay. Sharnawas Khan, this is just too much here. I think you're bang on. You're bang on. Okay. That incidentally is a picture which was shot when I was 10 years old. Like he said, fourth from the left. Don't look at it too, too strongly. I was in class six. That was a year when I had my first crush. I don't look at any one of those girls. Okay. My first crush was that beautiful looking teacher. Beautiful looking teacher. Okay. She was 16 years older than me at that particular point in time. Of course, today also she must be 16 years older than me. That morning, the teacher asked the class, what do you want to do when you grow up? One guy put his hand up and said, doctor. Today, he is one of the top intervention, psych uh, intervention cardiologists in the United Kingdom. Another guy put up his hand. Teacher asked him, what do you want to become? He said, engineer. Today, he is part of the senior management team in one of India's biggest construction companies. A girl said, I want to be a cook. She actually meant chef. No, those days, I think we weren't as strong in the language as people today perhaps are. Today, the western part of India, she regularly appears on television, local television, and she does the equivalent of what Sanjeev Kapoor does, gives out instructions of recipes of how to cook, how to cook good food. And the teacher then turned around to me and asked, what do you want to become? And you know, I was mighty, mighty happy. My favorite teacher choosing to ask me, what did I want to do in life? I was tongue-tied. 
so she then asked what do you want to do in life i was so happy at that particular point in time that i said miss i want to be very very happy she said but what do you want to do i said i want to be very happy that evening the teacher wrote in my report card this kid is outstandingly good in every subject he is very good in english he is very good in hindi he is very good in arithmetic he is very good in uh, science very good in history very good in civics very good in geography very good in sports but this guy does not know what he wants to do in life in retrospect in hindsight when i look back maybe my answer might not have been on account of design might have been on account of accident but when i look back today i think that beautiful looking teacher was horribly wrong today i think the most important thing in life for anybody is only to be happy if your son or your daughter if your nephew or your niece tomorrow wants to be an accountant wants to be a banker wants to be a ca wants to be a doctor wants to be an engineer wants to be a film star wants to be a lawyer wants to be whatever those are only paths where the ultimate goal the final objective is to be happy i won't call this rule number 1 but i would say it is important for all of us each and every one of us here to do things that will ultimately bring us happiness let me now move on and let me now tell you what we guys used to do when we were in school when we were in school we told ourselves that we all want to go to the indian institute of management some of my classmates wanted to go to the indian institute of technology iit iim we told ourselves if we go to iit iim we can then pick up a big corporate career we'll make a lots and lots of money we never realized that going to iim was only transitory pleasure because the moment you step in there new goals new challenges come in you'll have to read hard you'll have to compete with people for grades you'll have to fight out for placement all that there are many of us who say if only i can get promoted things would be so very better i'm sure there are some people who even say if the boss has a heart attack it would be wonderful i uh, don't turn around look at your boss or bosses don't turn around look at your colleagues uh we don't realize that perhaps the boss is very very unhappy at this particular point in time a third important thing is that we perhaps tell ourselves if only i can go for that vacation in zurich or that vacation somewhere i would be very very happy so long as ladies and gentlemen we slip into this if then model we are actually inviting unhappiness as somebody once said if happiness you are going to seek it by getting something then you are walking towards unhappiness because what you can get is something that you can also unget let me give you an example we'll draw an analogy take a look at this i'm sure many of you here would have seen a rainbow how many of you have seen a rainbow can you put up your hands oh that's good that's good and when you saw the rainbow what did you feel like you felt it was so very wonderful you were enthralled in the moment i don't think any one of us asked ourselves or told ourselves hey it would have been much much more wonderful if that rainbow had been had been one foot to the left or 3 feet to the right the moral of the story ladies and gentlemen boys and girls is very very simple the moral of the story is that the first step the first rule is if you want to walk into happiness you will have to to a large extent accept the world as it is it is important for us to understand that happiness lies in a process happiness does not lie in the destination that's what i think is very very central and very very important i'll now move on to my second story i'll move on to what is popularly called the spaghetti sauce model to happiness this is a story that dates back in time goes to the 1980s there was a company called campbell soup 
or was it called Campbell Sauce? There was a company called Campbell, which was manufacturing a sauce called Prego. And uh, in the market, this was the runner up because the outright runaway winner was almost always Ragu, the competing sauce. This notwithstanding the fact that Prego, ta Prego tasted extremely well. This notwithstanding the fact that Prego had, if you, if, for example, if you were to pour Prego into, onto a spaghetti, then it would not roll over, it will go and sit bang on the top. Whereas, Ragu would actually flow out. In other words, in other words, Prego had what people wanted, stickiness. Ragu did not have what people wanted, stickiness. Yet, despite that, notwithstanding that, the front runner of the market was Ragu and Prago was long, long behind. It was then that the, that Campbell soup got in touch with a man called Howard Moskowitz. And Howard Moskowitz chose to do an analysis. He made 45 different varieties of the Prago sauce. Varieties in, term, uh, varieties in terms of sourness, varieties in terms of sweetness, variety in terms of tomatoness, variety in terms of thickness, variety in terms of it having great ingredients of garlic, etc, etc, etc. After he had done that, after he had created 45 different varieties, he, across the next six months, invited cartloads of people to come to different different places and each one of them each one of these people were given 10 different varieties of sauce 10 different varieties of sauce stuck onto the spaghetti and they were asked to taste it these were, these were in small small quotient in small small quantum at the end of six months he had mountains and mountains of data and when he had mountains and mountains of data, he did not do what you and I as analysts often do. He did not go and say, hey, this item number 42 is the best one. So Campbell, go please sell item number 42. He didn't do that. He instead clustered all of them. He instead clustered all of them and uh, came out with the conclusion that there are, that Americans like three types of sauce. One sauce which is plain, two, sauce which is spicy, and three, sauce which is extra chunky. And he, when he said that one third of America likes sauce which is extra chunky, the owners of Prego said, wow, is that true? The reason was very simple. Those days in the 1980s, if you went into American supermarkets, you, never, you were never sold sauce which was extra chunky. And the story goes that Prego accepted the advice of Howard Moskowitz and over the next 10 years, the company made $600 billion and in fact, uh, outgunned Ragu. The moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple. Happiness does not lie in one product. Happiness is not, not like a triangle. You have a car, you want a better car, you want a still better car, no. Happiness lies in variety. Happiness is like no, a box like a rectangle where you can have different items that make you happy. There are different items that are different things that make different, different people happy. In the world of medicine, people say that there is no one type of cancer. People say that your cancer is different from my cancer and therefore we'll have to find out solutions to treat your cancer which is so very different from my cancer. So the most important learning I would think is that we should not hunt for the one thing that will give us happiness. The one thing that gave the neighbor happiness. The one thing that gave the third party happiness. No, because there are 45 different varieties that can actually give you happiness. And you must try all of them in turn. I'll move on. I'll go on to my second model. Uh, no, I'll move on to now very quickly talk about the digital era. And then I'll go and uh, talk to you about the third model that I had in mind, the third rule I had in mind. Just to recap, 
Rule number one told us with the help of the if-then model, with the help of the rainbow, that happiness lies in largely accepting things as they are and to bring about improvements in them. Rule number two said that variety is actually the spice of life and you must therefore look for various things that will bring about happiness. And before I talk about rule three, I thought we link up the topic for the day, try to say why, why are we talking about happiness in the digital era? Is it because we are going through the digital era? Is it because we are currently going through industrial revolution 4.0? Or is it because it is far more difficult to be happy in the digital era than being happy in the earlier eras? I still remember back in school, I think I'm jumping out of context, but I'll still move. Uh, back in school, I still remember in my class nine, there was this running debate which talked about is science a blessing or is it a curse? Today we are talking about absolutely the same thing when we are talking about uh, how good or how not so good the digital era is. The digital era talks about collecting, storing, controlling, manipulating and distributing information in all forms. That's what makes the digital era exciting. And in this context, there are three areas. A, business, which is what we call the digital economy. B, personal, which is what we call social networking. And I would like to add a third society, which is where I would like to place ideas and concepts like smart city, like smart governance, like online trading, online shopping, etc. The interesting thing in all of this, be it business, be it personal, be it society, is the fact that a whole lot of images, a whole lot of voice, a whole lot of pictures, a whole lot of text, a whole lot of videos, a whole lot of multiple, multiple things are getting captured to be used for our benefit and maybe used against us as well. In the same context, in the same digital era, we are also seeing another era. It's called the switch era. The era when most of the activities are moving to the, the cloud and they are on an on-demand shared system. This is happening to data processing, data processing, sorry, data capture. Data capture has gone on the cloud. Data processing has gone on the cloud. Business applications like Microsoft, Adobe, etc., they have gone on the cloud. Uh, social media has also obviously gone on the cloud. Communication, which is what Skype, etc., are, they have all gone on to the cloud. And there are four significant aspects in this cloud era. The four very significant aspects in this cloud era are social networking. Today, almost everybody almost everybody, a whole, whole lot of people are sitting on the social media. Media like Facebook, media like Twitter, media like LinkedIn, with the first two named, both Facebook and Twitter, despite all their enormous advantages that, that they bring in their wake, which can actually be precursors to happiness, has actually led, at least in several parts of the world, to distress. Social networking is there in the context of massive presence of people who are interconnected. For example, I know most of the guys, you know, the picture that I showed you, I, I, I today know most of them. And all that has happened thanks to Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, until, until 2006, or maybe until, until Facebook really caught people's imagination, until 2010, I had no access to them. The second important aspect of the cloud era is mobility. Mobility which gives people accessibility to information. Mobility that gives people access to data. And both of this is leading to analytics, leading to big data, which means that there is going to be a lot, lot more of business intelligence, lot, lot more of social intelligence. And there is every possibility that others, people with whom you interact, people uh, in governance, people uh, from whom you shop, they have far more information about you than what you yourself would have, largely because they have analyzed you, whereas you have chosen not to analyze yourself. 
all of this all of this has ultimately happened because of cloudification and cloudification involves sharing of massive resources online there was a talk about instagram oh, there was talk there was talk about uh, how photographs are being shared today i think people have opened themselves up to sharing almost everything everywhere the story actually goes that while the federal bureau of investigation the fbi tried for 240 years from 1776 to 2006 or why right up to 2016 they always wanted to find out which american is a democrat which american is a republican for 240 years they could not do that and yet one man mark zuckerberg in the space of the next 5 years did exactly find that out thanks to the emergence of facebook these are what i believe are the ones that are today involving our stepping into areas that are unknown and areas that are unknown can always bring about the sen a sense of uncertainty i'll very very quickly just uh, uh, very quickly try to tell you that we are walking into uncertainty largely because the audits of tomorrow as one of the speakers earlier said audits of tomorrow are going to be done largely with the help of ai artificial intelligence today therefore there is still growing talk about how many of us will actually get thrown out of employment it's also important to realize that just because in the past just because in the past new technologies did not throw accountants out and that accountants embraced the technology and therefore uh, therefore they are still on that may not today necessarily be true because today while we know that there are new technologies that are coming in while we know perhaps that old jobs are going to be replaced by new ones we really today do not know what the new ones are going to be and that can be a source for huge amount of unhappiness audits in the future are going to be cloud based digital uh, service delivery is going to be completely digital the internet of things once it comes in a big way will help people audit from wherever they are big data of course is the biggest example is going to be the biggest game changer i do not know how fast robotics will actually hit uh, the accounting profession but i do know very very clearly that robotics is going to hit manufacturing in a big way and that's obviously also therefore got to change the way that we audit that's the part where i wanted to very very broadly give you a large picture about the cloud about uh, the digital era an era which uh, is flooded with uncertainty and therefore there's a view that maybe this era might not might lead us to a lot of unpleasantness when you're out of job when you don't have the skill set or when you don't find employment opportunities around you it can be a challenge but the history of mankind has always been such that people have innovated who did ever once upon a time think that there would be lots and lots of employment opportunities come the way of people thanks to uber or ola who did ever once upon a time think that something like swiggy would give people lots and lots of employment opportunities so my own take is that it's largely wise to be to be accepting things as they are bring about improvementalist to it it's also my take that you no know, we should look at different different things in order to get our sense of happiness we should not be looking at somebody else and say hey this is what makes him happy this will also make me happy as well because like i said uh, maybe rather very forcefully that excess cancer is different from my cancer i'll now go to the third and last story that i wanted to share with you but before that i think i'll run this audio visual which talks about what happens on the internet in 60 seconds time
Yeah, I'll go on to my third story. We're all familiar with this. And I was mighty happy, terribly happy, that what I had all along experienced was the kind of experience that somebody else also shared with me. So I always loved wearing jeans. Back in college, there was just one type of jeans that you wore. You go to a shop, you tell, hey, this is my waist size, they give you a pair of jeans. And you know, jeans last for donkey's years. So maybe the last jeans that I must have bought was 10 years ago. Oh, it's something that does not wear out. It is just there forever and forever. Three years ago, I went to a shop because I wanted to buy a pair of jeans. So I went there, met the shopkeeper. It was in one of those malls. And I told him, this is my weight size. I want a pair of jeans. He said, sir, what do you want? Do you want slim fit? Do you want easy fit? Or do you want regular fit? I was foxed. And even before I could make up my mind what he was talking, he said, do you want uh, button jeans or do you want zip jeans? So he was already talking about three to two, six models. And even as I was processing this information, he said, do you want it stone washed? Do you want it acid washed? So three into two, six into two, 12 choices. And then even as I was thinking about it, he said, do you want the jeans to be tapered at the bottom or do you want it to be brought in? 24 choices. I, I really did not know what I wanted. I therefore told him, I want the type of jeans that I once used to buy, where I used to go to the shop and tell him, I want a jeans that he used to give, and he used to give me. Obviously, the young lad there did not understand. He thought, no, I must have been coming from the Mars or must have been coming from a very different uh, generation. And therefore, he told me, sir, they don't make uh, any of those jeans these days. So I, I finally sat with him. No, we tried multiple, multiple options. And finally, I walked out with one pair of jeans. Let me tell you, the pair that I finally walked out with was 100% better than the kind of jeans that I would have otherwise bought. The choices were actually good. But you know, when I walked out, I told myself, hey, if I had not bought this pair of jeans, if I had bought some other pair of jeans, one of those other 24, would it not have been better? I walked uh, some 100 meters away. I thought, oh, let me also try a third pair of, should I try a third pair of jeans, buy that one as well. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to get down to is that when you have plenty of choices, your satisfaction actually comes down. Your happiness at having made a choice actually comes down. I'm not saying that we should not have choice. I would be the last one to say that people should have no choice. People should have choice. But too much of choice is also not good. Lots of cho while some choice is better than no choice, lots and lots of choice is not better than some choice. This is what I call the tyranny of choice. When I bought a jeans early times and if it did not fit well or did not look well, I knew whom to blame. I knew whom to curse. I, I knew whom to take uh, my anger on. The jeans company, the shopkeeper. But right now I don't know whom to take my anger out on because there were plenty of choices and it was I who made the final choice. So sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, what is important for us to realize that less choice is actually good. You walk down the path of happiness if you have very, very few choices. I, 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 I do not know whether I'm, try, I'm conveying this well to you, but I want you to keep in the back of your mind, somewhere in the back of your mind, that there is something called the tyranny of choice. I'll give you an example. My wife is a practicing doctor. So I'll give you an example from the world of medicine. Today when you go to a doctor and a doctor recommends a treatment, he does not have one option. He has three options. A doctor says, here are three ways of treatment for you. This is option one, this is option two, this is option three. These are the advantages of option one, these are the disadvantages of option one. These are the advantages of option two, these are the disadvantages of option two. 
these are the advantages of option 3 these are the disadvantages of option 3 please don't think i'm making this up and then he asks you what do you, which option do you want so you tell him uh, uh, you tell me which option sir he says there are, he again repeats there are three options option a option b option c these are the advantages of option a these are the advantages of option b these are the advantages of option c and these are the disadvantages of abc then like a smart guy you tell him a doctor if you were in my place what would you have done and the doctor would almost always tongue in cheek says unfortunately i am not in the place in which you are what is the moral of the story the profession of medicine for a variety of reasons has gone defensive and thrown the choice at the patient and economists have come out with a phrase for this they say patient's autonomy this to my mind is downright stupid because here is a situation where instead of an expert choosing what you should do what and who is in a better position to decide what you should do the choice or the decision making comes to a to a person who is not a specialist in the field not only is he not a specialist in the field he is also a person who at that particular point in time is sick and therefore he is in no shape to make uh, judgments i want you to take a look at this picture i don't want you to read it too hard but this is called the paradox of aging this is a overall life satisfaction index which was worked out in the united kingdom from four surveys between april 2014 and march 2015 anybody here who can interpret that picture who wants to interpret that picture as age progresses your happiness decreases and then increases and then maybe it drops down maybe a shade drops down yeah but that the question today is what is midlife how old is old yeah so after 50 55 it's beginning to increase what people are saying is that while this sounds paradoxical the fact that older people are actually turning out to be happier than younger people while it sounds paradoxical there is some hidden message there when you have plenty of time on hand that is when you are young you have plenty of time on hand you want to experiment with multiple things you begin to pass judgments you want to change the world uh you want to experiment many things you want to go even perhaps on a blind date but as you grow as you mature as you see more of the world and as you realize that you no know, there's a very short span of time left in your life or very short span of time left in our lives we begin to identify what our priority areas we don't begin to quibble with everything and everybody we stop maybe to put it very crudely as often happens in india we begin to stop watching uh, english news in the evenings because you realize no these are not the sources of happiness so when one realizes that there is a paucity of time and which sits squarely with what i told you earlier that when there is paucity of choices when there is no great variety of choice a person tends to be more happy so it is not that we have to actually reach that age in order to begin to feel happy i think even while we are early in our life and we are young when we are impressionable when we are in the 30s when we want to change the world while it is good to change the world we should also learn how to be happy according to me there are six f's to happiness fame fortune family friends fitness and future if you are if you achieve fame if you become well known and famous i think that brings a sense of happiness if you have left footprints in the sands of people's time i think it brings up happiness there are lots of people who would say money does not buy happiness i agree money does not buy happiness but minus money there are whole other things that can't be bought and therefore money is obviously a hygiene factor whose presence may not bring happiness but whose absence brings unhappiness fame is one fortune is the second the third important thing is how well knit how close are you to the family how close are you to the, your parents how close are you to your brothers and sisters the fourth is what kind of relationships have you built 
what kinds of friends you have built who are the friends who can be counted who are the friends who cannot be counted who are the fair weather friends and who are the good friends it's also important to stay healthy stay fit and as one not just advances in age even otherwise one has to be physically fit and last but definitely not the least if you think that your future is good and education is one of the yardsticks that brings a goodness of the future if you realize that your future is good then you tend to be very happy denmark which has been widely voted as the happiest country in the world their people swear by three things their people swear by family and friends their people swear by fitness and their people talk about huge investment in education investment in education investment in healthcare and investment in family and friends is what denmark says has made it the happiest nation in the world i'll summarize what i talked to you so far i told you that the long term goal of any individual is to be happy i also told you that it is good to accept things as they are if you fall into the trap of the if then model then you are walking your way towards unhappiness i told you with the help of the spaghetti sauce example of campbell sauce company of the united states that embracing diversity is the second step to happiness never look for one item that will give you happiness look for bottles of items that will give you happiness what gives you happiness is not what gives somebody else happiness i also told you about the four significant aspects of the digital era i talked to you about how audits are likely to look in the future we then looked at how the world today is extremely noisy there is so much so much that happens on the internet in a second and that if we become slave to gadgets if gadgets begin to run us rather than we run the gadgets then we are actually stepping on the path to unhappiness i also laid down what i call rule number 3 that the secret to happiness is less choice and maybe lower expectations there are six f's to happiness fame fortune family friends fitness and having a resounding future that picture is so very often seen on the internet a family sitting for dinner each one talking not with each other but talking with a gadget which is not the way that it should be to summarize i would say that you must learn what gives you happiness you need to stay positive because a huge chunk of happiness comes from out of the head you guys are extremely extremely lucky you need to be you like all of us need to be grateful you should be grateful that you are a chartered accountant you should possibly be grateful that you live and make a career in what i would think as one of the most beautiful cities in the world i think you should be grateful for your life in general because we live just one life and it's very very important to make the stay in the world pleasant thanks a lot ladies and gentlemen for the opportunity Thank you, C A V Patabiram. Requesting anyone who has any questions. Without any patience, we have a question for you. Whether happiness and sadness coexist, leading to a state of neutrality, and whether that condition is good at the same point in time. Yes. I can be happy today. I can be unhappy tomorrow. No, no. At same point of time. i am not able to just asking no i understand can, your question can it coexist i i am not able to answer that question because if i would answer that question i think it would become too philosophical i can only think that one can be happy at a point in time or sad at a point in time and that can happen this morning that can happen this evening i don't i am not too very sure whether at the same point in time you can be both happy and sad or uh, in a reverse way if you are if you are neutral 
you can be neutral yeah that's quite possible you can be neutral uh, maybe being neutral is what was my example number 1 where i said no uh, that that's fine at that point of time is it is the coexistence of happiness and unhappiness i don't think so you are you are you 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 are showing no emotion at that particular point in time you are having no feeling of an emotion at that particular point in time happiness and sadness coexisting since you made that point uh can be can be like you know a parallel that off the head comes to my mind is about what people call a frenemy the guy is a friend the guy is an enemy you love to hate a person or you hate to love a person so you have both love for the guy you also don't like him you are able to imagine that situation no there are people whom you totally dislike but at the same time for the kind of work that they do you might say hey this guy is really really good yes, it happens doesn't happen it happens it happens it happens quite quite often so that that's the closest example that i thought i could give uh hello i can cite few cases where happiness and unhappiness coexist yeah you are marrying your daughter you are extremely happy for her future and extremely disheartened she is not there with you in your family from tomorrow that's that's good but you are going abroad for taking up some assignment you are extremely happy for the new challenges you are going to face Correct. at the same time you are leaving your family behind so you are extremely disappointed there could be n number of such cases and quite possible these are something which i can cite so you share. seem to be talking a lot about the family yeah yeah fair enough i agree with yeah. you this tyranny of choice is yes. it uh, gender specific no answer sir no maybe i i i do not know what to say but the broad broad thought is that for example i can say only out of my experience when i go to a shop i quickly pick up one or the other when my wife goes to a shop uh, she takes maybe 2 hours so i don't go with her she goes with uh, somebody else to go pick that up so they they look at multiple multiple things they pick up one dress another dress and then tell the guy i want nothing no they would have picked seen 100 dresses and then say i don't want anything whereas i go i take take a look i say okay this is all right let's pick and come oh, could be also could be also it's actually it's actually good to have very little choice uh, what is the color of a pant that one can wear very few so it's actually good you don't have to one does not have to break one heads too much about making choices hello yes sir yeah happiness some patab is a good question Hap- okay yeah, yeah yeah happiness is short lived ha huh. happiness is short lived just this moment i can be happy but suddenly something may happen next minute it will make me unhappy yeah yeah but, but peace of mind peace is long lasting so what is your opinion by peace you are making a reference to continuous sense of or you are making a reference to what he said that no anything should not excite you is that what you are saying i would think peace of mind would be a constant state of happiness you i think you hit the nail on the head when you said no i can be happy now next moment i can feel very sad okay a team that i support doing very well i feel very happy next moment i feel very sad but but those are all event specific so if you are saying that one should have a peace of mind it is about uh, in my my thought process it is about having a constant state of happiness continuously being happy and i would think no out of my limited experience i say i would think that that would happen if you begin to accept the fact that no different people can have different views on a thing the different th- different things make different uh, people respond to a situation in a different way and so long as you don't take it personally i think people can uh, can have that peace of mind you're right yes sir yeah. so there's a question uh, from your talk it's quite uh, uh, interesting see when uh, we have a conflict constant conflict in life even small children you know school going boy if you ask if the father is asking how much mark you got i got 60 and i'm happy but the dad says that's not enough you should work hard and you should get more so on one side the that life demands striving more and more and achieving more and more on the other side we have to be uh, 
be contented with what we have but how do you and this continues in school and then we go to college and then we go to office then we go into the career and then I, we I, further I, I will answer endlessly that. it goes but how do you balance between these two conflicts i will, I will answer that in two stages can you just go back to that ppt there can you just go back to that presentation can you go back uh, no go forward to where we are showing multiple people in different age groups i skip that so i think i'll spend a little bit of time forward 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 yeah you talked about i I'm, i'm beginning with that example that you said that at school a child says 60 i'm very happy about it the dad wants it to score more my own guess is that to to first begin from there is that at different points in time in life different things make different people happy a school boy is happy when holidays are declared okay a teenager is happy when he performs and performs reasonably well a young man is happy when he gets a job more importantly gets money middle aged people look for fame for peace for fortune senior citizens you know they look for love they look for uh, affection senior and both the super senior also look for health okay so it is a demand of the father it is the desire of the father that the son must get score more i'm not saying his desire is wrong at the same time there are different things that drive different people's happiness the kid is happy getting 60 whether the child should fight up further to score more depends as to what on what age group he is when you grow older when a kid grows older goes into class 9 goes into class 10 in the system of education that we have in india a child has to score more good or bad that's how it is happening and that i would personally think is very very sad very very bad because there is no such thing that every every child in this world should either be a doctor or be an engineer or be a chartered accountant or be a lawyer there are multiple things that can actually make people happy for example in canada okay my my nephew today studies in canada under graduation uh in his under graduation course they have to pick up seven subjects the subjects that he has picked up are a psychology in which i guess he is going to major two creative writing three theater four mathematics a bundle of what we what you and i would call unrelated subjects so in in my own little view to the extent possible while i do know that boys are young girls are young and impressionable it is good to let them do what they want to do but your point is taken that there is a balance that one needs to strike sometimes one has to do things that one does not necessarily like so you cannot always uh, Uh, you cannot always do things that you always like sometimes you will have to do things that you don't like i'll give you one example personal example i've not told this anywhere but i'll give you i i hate flying from chennai to bangalore and bangalore to chennai absolutely i hate i almost hate flying anywhere but that's a different story okay but no i have to do that i have no choice i have to do that so at some particular point in time people begin to realize that these are a few things that have to be done and that's why life is not uh, what should i say a steady flow of happiness or like sir said no you cannot always always pick up peace of mind and that kind of balancing that kind of having assets and liabilities is also what makes life fun if you for example if you if you love a love a sweet you can eat so much if you keep on eating the same sweet at some point in time no you lose out on the taste so maybe maybe uh there is an idea that no like like when you surf on the sea there is an up and down and up and down we need you can't always be up it should not always be down there has to be those balances that should take place that is what will make life more interesting and exciting i don't know whether i have answered you but i thought i will share what i wanted to share with you mr ram here yes sir. what would you uh, is there any study which suggests that the a uh, normal human being or average human being is more happier in morning or evening <laughs> different things make people happy differently different things for example when prabhu asked me 
no when do you want to speak i said i wanted to speak in the night so uh, there are some people who say i want to speak in the morning uh, i would think i would think that no although i was when i did my ca when i did my graduation i have always been a late bird i uh, woke up uh, went to sleep very late uh, studied long into the night used to wake up very late used to wake up 15 minutes before going to office etc today i wake up at 4:30 in the morning i do a lot of writing bulk of my writing is from 4:30 to 5:45 in the morning when there is absolute peace there is no noise and even here for example this morning i got up at 4:30 india time okay so what i am saying is that when you get used to something that form becomes a habit and uh, moods depend upon people i think when you when you wake up in the morning you generally want to be happy because i don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and says uh, let my day be miserable okay so from that standpoint also one i think one should uh, believe in the dictum that the objective of life the purpose of life is happiness the many things that we do being a ca being a lawyer being a doctor or seeking wealth etc is on the path towards the happiness so i just want to make one note here in Who your first slide you showed a beautiful teacher everybody no one second us, you're talking about the teacher so i should see you it's ah, me ah yeah, yeah 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 like uh, i just want to put up a note that you know the moment you put a slide of your childhood uh, most of us remark a beautiful teacher this is because we spend quality time whether we have less choice or multiple choice we are very specific in what we choose so we are happy it can be 10 minutes in a pick up of you know very small choice or it can be asked together when we reject seeing hundreds but we are very specific maybe an exception to the example that you know if even with multiple choice you may not be happy but yes we would say whether it is a limited choice or multiple choice we are very specific because we are choosing the right it is not only the teacher any picture you display like this with multiple genders i'm sure most of us will be attracted to the best outfit female there that's what i wanted to make a note thank you sir thank you very much i have no no comments to observe uh, i agreed with everything that you said except the last sentence while not uh, getting late in the evening so i'll not get into an argument that we only select the teacher only the best girl maybe you would have selected the best boy there not the fourth guy from the left okay mostly we don't select any boy no no what you said is perfectly right thank you ladies and gentlemen for those questions I think we had more questions relating to happiness than any other technical session that we had this evening which only goes to show it is definitely a very important topic so thank you CA Patavi Ram for giving us your wonderful insights I'd like to invite CA Bhavani Prasad and CA Shahnawaz Khan on stage to kindly felicitate our speaker and I'd also like to invite the rest of the managing committee members of the Muscat chapter to kindly come up on stage <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen one more huge round of applause requesting the managing committee to kindly stay on stage <laughs> <laughs>